Now earlier this week, Huawei most definitely dropped Trout and indulged in a proper bit of willy waving courtesy of its clever new Mate XS foldable phone, but that definitely does not mean that Huawei has done launch a new kit. In fact, the Huawei P40 and P40 Pro flagship phones are lingering just on the horizon, ready to pop out and hopefully dazzle us with even more impressive innovation. Now at that Mate XS launch, Huawei actually officially revealed that the P40 and the P40 Pro would be fully unveiled at a massive launch event in Paris on March the 26th, so really not long to wait at all now. And of course, as always, in preparation for the P40 launch, we've got the usual tirade of leaks and rumours and all kinds of shenanigans flooding the internet. So let's wade through that mire of speculation and general bullshittery and see if we can find any little golden nuggets of truth in there. So first up, what can we actually expect from the Huawei P40 and P40 Pro as far as the design goes? Well, a photo actually emerged not too long ago of what appears to be maybe an early P40 prototype out in the wild, although this pig doesn't exactly give much away. OnLeaks though has been back in his usual form, producing these renders which certainly seem legit, even if they don't reveal much more than the previous effort. And given the lad's past record, chances are they are on the money. So basically it appears that the P40 handsets are going to look like your typical smartphone with shiny reflective surfaces. Big shock. And we've also seen some P40 renders showcasing a veritable rainbow of colours, which is pretty standard for Huawei, so definitely could be accurate. Now what about the display tech? What can we expect Huawei to actually slap on the front of the P40 and the P40 Pro. Well, I've got all my bits tightly crossed for a boundary pushing OLED screen up front with that waterfall design that we know and love from previous Huawei phones, cascading over the edges for a lovely bezel free finish. Online leaksters seem to be fighting quite bitterly over the actual dimensions of the display on the P40 and the P40 Pro, but I reckon the P40, the standard model, will probably come with around a 6.2 inch display as usual, and that P40 Pro model will probably be around the 6.5 to 6.6 inch area. Last year's P30 and P30 Pro made do with a full HD resolution, which was still perfectly sharp, but I would expect to see a Quad HD Plus panel appearing on at the very least the P40 Pro model, and web rumors also point to a 120Hz refresh rate just like the Galaxy S20 smartphones for a silky smooth UI experience. And here's hoping we get a tasty bit of 240Hz touch response rate on the P40 handsets as well, so every poke, swipe and whatnot will garner an immediate response when you're busy gunning down strangers in the likes of PUBG Mobile. And what about the performance here on the new P40 handsets as well? Well, those smarts will definitely be provided by Huawei's own Kirin 990 platform, which debuted in the Mate 30 handsets from last year. This means the P40 and the P40 Pro are bound to serve up a silky smooth gaming experience no matter what title you're blasting through and even on those top detail levels as well, and hopefully should prove nice and future proof for at least a two or three year contract. And that Kirin 990 chipset also features an integrated 5G modem, so does that mean we'll get super fast connectivity in the P40 phones? Well, so far the other major flagships launched in 2020, including the Samsung Galaxy S20 range and of course the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, all boast built-in 5G connectivity as standard. So you can expect the same from the P40 and the P40 Pro, especially as of course Huawei is heavily invested and personally involved in the rollout of 5G networks globally. What about the Huawei P40 and P40 Pro battery life though? Well, Huawei never disappoints when it comes to battery life, and indeed some recent web rumors point to an enormous 5,500 milliamp cell being stuffed inside of the P40 Pro. Personally, I'd knock that little nugget back with a full pint of salt, though. I reckon it's much more likely to be around the 4,500 milliamp mark, unless it turns out that the P40 Pro is a 7-inch behemoth. But, that said, you can at least expect some very nippy 50-watt fast charge support, and probably, at the very least, wireless charging support for the P40 Pro as well. Of course, the one little irritating insect in the ointment is likely to be the lack of Google services, an issue which also blighted the Mate 30 devices before it, and one that is certain to repeat for the P40 smartphones. The P40 will likely come back in Android 10 with the Huawei's Emotion UI 10 launcher slapped on top, just like the Mates, but without a lovely bit of Google Play action. So you'll be reliant on stuff like the Huawei App Gallery, the Amazon App Store and web clients to access all of your usual services. Between the various first and third party options, I've just about managed to get my usual array of services stacks onto the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, so it's definitely a workable situation. Of course, Huawei is bound to throw tons of money at the problem as well in a bid to make it all go away. But of course, it is still a disadvantage compared with other handsets that come packing Google Play and all of those lovely Google services. So even if it is just a short-term issue, are you willing to live with it? Now, the best bit of any recent Huawei smartphone has definitely tended to be the camera tech slapped on the back, and I'm fully expecting the Chinese giant to have a proper swing at Samsung's S20 handsets with the P40s. Rumors point to a quint camera setup led by a mighty 52 megapixel primary lens using Sony's IMX686 sensor, 
backed also by a 20 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, a macro and a time of flight depth sensor. Recent rumors suggest that Huawei's P40 handsets will be able to combine the information from 16 pixels into one using the now standard pixel binning technique that you get on a lot of smartphone cameras. And this will basically mean incredible low light shots packed with detail and really reducing the amount of noise in there to spoil the proceedings. And there's also lots of chatter around a 10 times optical zoom to take on the Galaxy S20 Ultra and its crazy space zoom chops. Very tasty. Expect Huawei to cut out some of the more clever camera tech for the standard P40 handset in order to bring down the cost a wee bit. And to be honest, even if it comes back in a standard three times telephoto zoom, that'll still be absolutely fine for most people. And now onto the final question. Where can I get one of these shiny morphos and how much? Well, the Huawei P40 and the P40 Pro should officially be a thing out there in public in about a month's time and therefore will probably go on sale around April time globally, apart from in the US of course, because Huawei and Trump are no longer besties. As for the pricing, well, as usual, that's just a case of pissing in the wind. But going off previous handsets and the general trends, you can expect the standard Huawei P40 to come in at around the sort of 700 pound mark and the P40 Pro will be about 200 quid more expensive if you want that really cutting edge tech. So are you getting all hot and bothered about the new P40 and P40 Pro? It'd be great to hear your own personal thoughts. I'm still a massive fan of the big P30 and P30 Pro from last year. Go check out my long-term reviews of both of those handsets to see what I think of them now in 2020. And touch wood, fingers crossed, I'll be at that P40 launch at the end of March. So stay tuned for my full in-depth hands-on reviews and more on those bad boys. And don't forget to plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers. Love you.